morning, everybody. Welcome to the Java with John program. Uh, we're live on the radio, 94.9, and we're uh, cast on YouTube as well. And this program will be aired later on Action TV. So thanks for joining the September 18th uh, program. This is the Java with John program. is something we've been doing for the last six months. Uh, a, a year ago or years ago, it was a program we did in person at the Senior Center uh, once a month. Uh, over the last six months, we've been doing it almost weekly uh, in a virtual format, and we bring in new guests every week and provide a public health update and some other updates. And the main purpose is to try to continue a connection with our senior community, but also I bet you there's other people that watch it as well. And uh, we really like the opportunity to connect with guests and, and give people updates on what's happening. So uh, here in, in Acton, we've had a busy September. We had a big town meeting uh, last week uh, the day after Labor Day, oh, there were nine articles, eight passed. Uh, the town took some very important measures that night. Uh, the town approved the acquisition of Piper Lane uh, open space and conservation land, which was a priority acquisition for the town for many years. So that's very exciting. Uh, the town came out and supported small businesses, which was such a nice thing to see. We had uh, an article on the warrant to appropriate $160,000 or so to help 43 small businesses in town and uh, to say that it was supported is an understatement when the when the small business owners who were in attendance that night went up on the stage to speak and support the article they got rounds of applause just for introducing themselves as small business owners so it was really nice to see uh, and it's a proud moment uh, for us and for me to be part of this community that supports, supports small businesses which are definitely a big part of what makes acting a special place uh, other actions that night including uh, declaring a climate emergency. There was a local advocacy group called the Climate Coalition who sponsored an article uh, to declare a climate emergency and that was supported uh, overwhelmingly by by the meeting that night. And it was a, it was a good night. We held it inside and outside uh, due to the pandemic and it was a successful endeavor. And I appreciate everyone out there who helped make it uh, happen and everyone that came out that night to, to participate. Uh, we've also uh, been busy with uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, this past week they appointed a commission called the Diversity, Equity and Inclusivity Commission and they're going to start meeting uh, later this month to try to help with uh, issues related to racial equity in Acton so that's very exciting and there's lots of other uh, items that we'll be publishing in our newsletter the Municipal Monthly look for that in a few weeks and uh, continue to follow our website and social media for updates so our guests today, we have several, so let's get started uh, right away. Uh, as we do every week, let's start with the public health update with the Director of Nursing, Heather York. Good morning, Heather. How are you today? Good morning, John. I'm fine. I hope you're well. Good morning, everyone. Um, so today in Acton, um, the case count overall since March is 202 cases with two cases currently in isolation. Um, busy week, as John said, um, Acton, Boxborough Regional School District started school on Monday. Uh, things are going well. Um, you know, there's a few bumps in the road like there is with every school system. Um, I wanted to mention to the seniors out there who have grandchildren who are going back to school to be cautious um, now that they're in a new cohort. Um, give yourself a couple of weeks of them being with a new group of, of people um, and try to you know, keep that social distance away, especially if you have an underlying disease process. Um, the numbers this week through the state dashboard, um, if anyone's following that, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Um, we were in the green, which is the second um, step up in the reporting system. We're now in the gray shaded, which is the lowest. Um, Acton right now is a 0.32% um, positivity rate in the last 14 days, which is great. Um, that went down from about, um, I think uh, point, 0.55 um, a, a, about a couple weeks ago. So that's good news. I just wanted to mention flu shots. Um, we are working on scheduling our clinics in October. Um, but it's very important this year for everyone to get their flu vaccine. Um, it is mandated by the state for any school-aged child to have that by December 31st. 
And it's important for everyone else to do that this year, most especially um, because the symptoms of the flu and COVID are so similar um, that they are expecting there'll be an overtax on the healthcare system. Um, never mind if we have another spike of COVID, but if we have um, a large uh, community spread of, uh, of flu. So if you can get your vaccine, um, whether it's at one of our clinics or it is at your physician's office, a pharmacy, um, wherever you can get it, um, start looking. Um, I think it'll go fast and furious. Um, so just to keep everyone healthy, it's a good idea to get that flu shot this year. Um, so stay safe, everybody. Have a good fall. It's nice to see you today. Thank you, Heather, and look forward to hearing more information about the flu clinics, um, and we'll help get the word out on this program and, and through other means. Uh, thanks, as always. Uh, our next speaker will be Sharon. Sharon Mercurio is the Director of Council on Aging, and she's been coordinating this program uh, and helping getting guests here and does a nice job in continuing to find ways to connect with our senior community, even though the Senior Center has been closed since March. So, Sharon, uh, what's going on today? How are you? Good. Thank you, John. Good morning, everybody. Um, first of all, you know, when you mentioned six months, I think that just is, is mind blowing. Um, and I look at how the town and um, my COA staff really reinvented themselves in such a short period of time to continue to get services to folks. Um, you know, and even though we're not open, the, the physical building's not open to the public, um, I feel like um, we're able to reach out to, to folks as best we can during this time. So, you know, huge that shout out to you, John, and to my staff. Um, I think it's it's just been, we're making do with what we have. Um, and the resilience of the scene is really is uh, amazing. Um, so Cheryl Ball, the um, director of, of the health department received a grant. So we had a program on social isolation and loneliness Monday. Um, it was a Zoom meeting, but now it's being broadcast on Acton TV. It was a great program. We have some resources available. So um, if anybody's interested, please reach out to either Cheryl or myself. Uh, Tuesday mornings, Terry Zaborowski, our beloved exercise instructor, has been doing a weekly um, Zoom class, Tips with Terry. So it's, it's a great interface with her because I think uh, I know for myself and everybody else, you miss seeing people, you know, just having, it's not the same over Zoom, but at least it's nice to see that friendly face or uh, people that were in your class. On Tuesday, um, we're doing a drive-through ice cream event um, with help from the United Way. And I'm sure they'll be talking about that later. Um, and we're also trying to roll in each year, we were having an anniversary at our new facility um, and that, won't happen this year. So we have little goodie bags we're going to be handing out with the ice cream on Tuesday. So please sign up if you um, would like to come. You stay in your car, everybody's masked and gloved and we'll, we'll hand you things either through the window or put them right in your trunk. Um, on Thursday, we have Ask the Lawyer. We have two elder law attorneys in Acton that um, had done face-to-face -face meetings uh, for years now at the senior center with folks. And again, we're trying to get back to um, some sort of normal. <laughs> so Kathleen Summers is available. She does 15 minute consultations with folks. Um, call if you'd like an appointment. There are still some available slots. We also have Rebecca Sweat, who is a harpist that used to play in Donlins. Most people know her from you know, walking uh, doing your shopping and hearing beautiful music. So we're doing a program with Rebecca on Thursday as well at one o'clock. And just a reminder that some folks will be getting their fuel assistance uh, reapplications in the mail. So if you're receiving that and you need some assistance or you'd just like somebody to look over it with you, give us a call. We can meet with you outdoors. Um, Beverly Hutchings is um, dealing with folks 60 and older and Laura Ducharme is, is dealing with the, the younger residents in town. Um, you can reach us both at 978-929-6652. And that's it for me today. Thanks, John. Getting back to the ice cream. Um, yes. Tell us more. Uh, what kind of ice cream and are there any age limits? Um, so we're doing it for seniors, 60 and older. <laughs> 
sorry, John, you could come help and there might be an extra. Um, and we're, we brought commercial prepackaged ice cream, just again, keeping safety in mind. Um, I know it's not the same as scooping on the sidewalk and getting a, a, a dripping ice cream cone, but we thought um, we just have to play it safe during these times. So we've got uh, a couple of different varieties. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe I'll uh, see if I can come by and maybe some right. extras at the end. Perfect. Uh, thank you for all the information. So our next our next speaker is, is Mike Tobia. Mike is the chairman of the Mount Calvary Community Supper Program. And he's here this morning to share some updates and information about all the work that they're doing uh, with his organization. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, John. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, yes, um, Mount Calvary, similar to what Sharon just indicated, we had to reinvent ourselves as well. So as I think most of the seniors know, we're located at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church, 472 Mass Avenue. Um, we serve a, um, on a to-go basis now. And quite frankly, we're one of the first dinner operations that we're able to switch over to a to-go basis. Um, we're serving approximately 150 to 170 meals every Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that's a full hot meal as well as dessert. We also have a, an arrangement with Panera Bread. So you get your selection of Panera Bread and we have a, we also have a, uh, a drive-through tent area where you get to select fresh produce that we get from a local farm in Lincoln. Um, we've been in operation since 2012 and believe it or not we've served to the acting community over 35,000 meals our mission is to obviously um, alleviate hunger and um, social isolation as well the social isolation part quite frankly as I think our um, viewers know has been difficult in, in a to-go basis um, versus our sit-down operation, um, but we're hoping that we can start that sit-down operation as soon as we find a cure for this dreadful disease. Um, we want to thank um, all our, quite frankly, we have 70 volunteers, many of which are Acton Boxborough residents, that without those volunteers, especially in these times, we could operate, John. So um, we've got people who have um, stepped up and um, take obviously the proper precautions, um, but we've got a tremendous group that are faithful and are serving the community every Wednesday. Again, our hours are from five to six. Um, you should know that because of daylight savings time, we're planning on adjusting those hours um, because of the dark weather and doing it to go drive through, um, we'll be moving the last week in October, uh, to four to five. And I want to thank everybody for their, um, uh, I especially want to thank our volunteers, um, many of which I hope are listening for their ongoing support because without them, John, we couldn't do the job that we're doing. So thank you for this opportunity. Well, yeah, thank you for everything that you and your group does for the community. Did you say 36,000 meals? We've served 35,000 meals since 2012, that's correct. And how many, about on average or generally, how many a week are we talking about? Um, like I indicated, our, uh, our numbers are up to 170, that's our high. Um, when we had prior to um, COVID, our numbers were more in the 120 range, quite frankly. And that was a, that was a big number for us. Um, but we're able to handle the 170. Last week, our numbers were 150. Um, and we, we have a, a chicken meal. We have spaghetti and meatballs, for example, a, a full, chicken, full chicken dinner. Um, the last week of every month during the summer, we've had um, kind of a, a barbecue 
hamburger, hot dog, pork and beans, coleslaw meal, again, as well as a dessert. Um, but we're fortunate that we're able to um, be able to um, get the funding to allow us to accommodate 170 guests every week. Well, that's terrific. And th thank you for, for everything that you're doing. If there's anything the town can do to help, please, please let us know. I know many of our staff and, and, and others are, are involved in, in one way or another over there, but please reach out if there's anything else we can do to help. That's great. Thank you for the opportunity today, John. Thank you. So our next speakers are uh, from the United Way. Uh, the executive director, Greet, uh, is here. This is her second, maybe third time on the program, and we're happy to see her back. Greet, good morning. What, what's happening with the United Way? Thank you, John, for having us again. Uh, it's great to see everyone. And first of all, I really want to thank um, John and the town, Sharon, Heather, Mike. Uh, I feel, I hope that all the listeners and viewers realize how much collaboration there is going on. And to me, that is a hopeful part that I think will stay and will fundamentally change the fabric of the town and can increase if we work together in quick way. So this week, upcoming week, is going to be very busy. And I have um, one of our volunteers, Dan Klein, here, who will explain what uh, is going to happen with the week of action. Uh, but before we go to the week of action, uh, you might have heard of the Day of Caring, which was a traditional day where we connected volunteers with uh, non-profits in the area or people who could use help. This year we said it is a year of change and of testing new things. And given that it's we live in a virtual world, we said we are not going to all gather in the morning together in a big group. So why not spread it so that more people can participate, learn about what are the needs in our town and what we found, which is again, if you're looking for some positive from the pandemic is that a lot of people are really eager to contribute and to volunteer. So we try to create more opportunities for more people to uh, participate. And Dan has been the leader for these activities. So Dan, do you want to tell about the week of action and what is happening actually? Absolutely. I want to tell everybody about the week of action. Uh, this is, I think, my fifth or sixth year working on this program. And this year we have 20 projects over 60 volunteers, uh, some direct to agencies, some doing other things. Uh, Sharon mentioned the ice cream. That's at two o'clock. Two o'clock, the ice cream in Boxborough uh, is also going to be doing that. Some examples of some of the other projects we're doing. Uh, we're, we have a group putting together art kits for the Minuteman Arc. Uh, they'll be doing that at NARA. Uh, we're testing a program of seniors reading to kids, to local kids. Um, and that's a, a, gonna be a program if it, if it continues that will go way beyond the week of action. Uh, another characteristic of this year's new model is that we're not limiting it to specific dates. Some of the things we're doing will go well beyond uh, just next week. Um, another example of that is uh, um, the uh, putting together kits of masks and backpacks uh, and that kind of thing. Um, some other examples we're doing uh, is we're having a civil engagement activity for voter registration and participation in the census. Um, one thing that I have always really enjoyed uh, Mike, you mentioned the community supper. Every year for as long as I've been doing this, the youth in philanthropy group from the high school goes over to the church and does a deep, deep cleaning of the kitchen. And when I go around to look at the different projects that are happening, they, those kids are the most enthusiastic participants in the entire program. It's just a, a, just a wonderful thing to see. And if you want to see the week of action from last year, Actum TV has a beautiful recording. Uh, there's also a three minute clip in our annual meeting that's also on Actum TV uh, because it's actually a really uplifting uh, moment. Uh, Great. What, uh, what, what is the, um, 
seniors reading to children? Is that uh, through Zoom or something? Yes. So we are trying, and this is, so what we say is it is a time of experimenting, testing, doing new things, and knowing that seniors are... Um, uh, Sorry, and, folks. It looks like I got frozen there for a minute. Uh, then just John asked a question about uh, um, the seniors that I'll answer and then I'll get back to you. So uh, the reading is basically asking seniors to read over Zoom. We hope that more seniors get connected through Zoom because if the winter is coming and we know it's a long winter in New England, um, if more people learn to use Zoom, so we hope to teach Zoom and then share books, children, picture books, uh, and have families volunteer who may want to break for their uh, little kids. And so the family would get the, ch the children's, the same picture book as the uh, seniors. And we would, volunteers are willing to drive to both sides. And then the seniors would be reading to the kids. The idea would be that it, you basically can develop a relationship and have a senior reading buddy, hopefully over time that you kind of have a, an extra adopted parent, which might be nice for the seniors to fight loneliness, which might be nice for the families to get a break and kids have another incentive and get to know somebody else in the community. So it's um, a test and we'll see if we can make it work. It's and yet a, another element that ties into that is we're going to try this year is collecting tablets for seniors. Uh, people will be able to, to clean up and donate their tablets that they're no longer using. And seniors who may not have a computer will then have this to participate in the reading program as well as anything else that can be done. And uh, so the tablets, for example, can also be for, um, we talk to household goods. If people come and pick up furniture, if they don't have devices, uh, we might say we, we give some to them. Or we will see how many we collect. Again, it's a test. But the idea is uh, in a family, if you have one device and lots of people, uh, or if you have no device and, and are reluctant, can we make it easy to try and connect and help people out and share resources? And, and also, in fact, to see Java with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another key activity in the week is uh, Chalk the Walk for Racial Justice, um, Acton Boxborough United Way says as our mission that we want to mobilize the caring power of community for lasting positive change. And we fight for the health, education, financial stability of every person in the community. And if we really say every person in the community, then we have to address racial justice, equity. Um, and so this is a, um, lighter start of a uh, program that we will be a long, uh, uh, hopefully forever program that we will be ro run uh, rolling out and it's a community to start a community conversation with families with neighbors with people with the business community and uh, john as you mentioned um, it's going to take place in west uh, Acton and the West Acton Mer Village Merchant Association was delighted because they didn't have an Oktoberfest. So we hope to also really encourage people to once stop by, get a cup of coffee or go and see a store or at least stroll in the area. And so it is so it should be socially safe. And for those who don't feel safe to come out or see, or if you are senior and housebound, you can watch on our website and you can go to actonboxbrowabuw.org on our website uh, and there will be a link and we will post the pictures. And the goal is to have really encourage respectful conversation, no election campaign, no bad words, uh, but um, trying to encourage uh, creative expression and the very nice thing is already that emerson umbrella of the arts called and said hey that's a great idea we want to do this in concord uh, and even that i think is spreading the conversation and uh, we will then afterwards with acton tv uh, have a program of why does acton boxball united way support racial justice and um, we will draw and share some of the uh, drawings and creativity that we have seen in the community uh, there are still i just want to point out opportunities to volunteer 
So again, the, the website is, is abuw.org if you'd like to participate in any of our programs. So, uh, Greet, have you thought of what you're going to be drawing on your chalk square? I have been thinking about it. Yeah. Can you give us a, a preview or is, it, is there a surprise? I think it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, good. Well, we look forward it to is, it. It is a tremendous pressure for me to try. I usually paint abstract cows, um, but that's not exactly what needs to happen here. So this goes beyond my artistic ability. But uh, what is beautiful, for example, is Minutemen Arc uh, sent uh, a grantee of ours, uh, an organization in uh, that many of you might know from uh, that based in Concord, but helps uh, uh, support people of disabilities without ages. They are going to come and send several teams uh, to the event as well. And so it is all people of all ages, all abilities, and all artistic abilities are welcome. Um, and so you will see mine will, will be rather sober, but, and you can also have a conversation even with what is drawn next to you, left or right, and build on that. So um, you are all welcome, John. I hope to see you too, and Sharon, Heather, Mike. If, if it's a great success, Mike, we come all the way to Mount Calvary. <laughs> So, uh, that's great. Can you just repeat the date again and, and a, a, how to contact for more information just for our listeners and, and viewers? Oh, um, sorry, this should not be happening here. Um, yes, uh, the it is starts on Monday and it goes all the way to Sunday. So it's an entire week that you can basically, we say, we ask a donation of 25 dollars to buy a three by three square you pick up your chalk in a store in uh, periwinkle acton coffee house lots of places and we will direct you when you register you get all the information um and then uh you you pick up your chalk bag you don't share chalk bags we want to keep it safe we have clear little instructions and then you go and find a square that is open and we will make each day new square so that they stay safely separate um, uh, and then you can uh, draw so it's from monday to friday and you can go to our website acton box pro a b u w dot org acton box pro united way and you can find more information there to sign up and uh, on facebook as well that's great I'm, I'm i'm not much of an artist but i'm going to see if i can bring my kids and, and help uh draw something nice so i look forward to seeing you out there Wonderful. Uh, so uh, thank you for the presentations and all the information. Uh, this this program uh, is on 94.9 FM, and it's also going to be rebroadcast on Acton TV. And I think that's a good opportunity for us to take a moment and just thank Acton TV. Uh, throughout this last six months, uh, we haven't been able to meet in person, and uh, Zoom is a good opportunity for many people, but others I have trouble with it and acting tv has been uh, a huge help in making sure that people can stay connected and engaged with what's happening in our community and they do a nice job um, with that anyways but i think over the last six months they've been uh, a huge asset for us so i just want to take a moment to thank mark and his team over at acting tv and um, at this point in the program we usually take questions i have a feeling that uh we haven't had too many phone calls yet, uh, but I think if Greet has a question for some of our other guests, I bet you she does. Otherwise, we can um, move on to the closing ceremonies. Mike, do you want to tell something exciting because uh, of the food security uh, task group that perhaps people don't know about? Um, sure, sure. So I actually have several examples of the food security task force. Um, agreed to spoke to um, every other Friday we have a zoom meeting and it brings together basically um, a lot of the organizations that um, provide human resource help in the active box for area um, many of which operated in their own individual silo um, I, I would say prior to um, the Acton Box for United Way starting the security uh, task force. And for us, 
personally, it enabled us um, to solve some ongoing problems uh, occurring because of our increase in numbers, for example. So um, one great example this past summer is um, there was a school in the Groton School um, because of uh, COVID was getting ready to clean out their freezers and had no place to donate their food. And we got a call and um, we were able to go up, up there, supply the food. Um, that food enabled us to serve five full meals for 150 people. Uh, and we were able to store it um, at Acton Congregational Church because we had no space. We did all, all this in approximately about 30 minutes worth of phone conversation that um, quite frankly, just would not have happened in the past. And that food may have gone to waste, for example. Um, and it was um, terrific, terrific quality food. Um, we also have had another example this past week where we go to Framingham once a month to pick up a thousand pounds worth of food. And the truck that we normally use, uh, my truck, um, is out of commission. And Greet's organization connected us with a, a local moving company. And that moving company picked up that food for us yesterday. And that's all stored away and we're set for another month. So those are two examples of um, just how valuable the security sessions are for us and how meaningful they are. And as Greet indicated, I, I really expect the impact of these meetings to go well beyond um, the next several months because the, um, the connections that have made have been just invaluable. So thank and you very much for everything. That, that group, um, just for listeners, I think you might be interested, there are 756 households uh, in Acton, Boxborough, and Maynard who get basically food uh, weekly through the four food partners, uh, Mount Calvary Supper, Acton Food Pantry, the AB schools who have been unbelievably terrific. Really also a shout out to all of them and the uh, open table in Maynard. Uh, those are the four food distribution points. Uh, uh, and uh, never before was all this information tallied, tracked, uh, who is open when, and there is now such an amount of collaboration and trust and sharing of resources that uh, that we hope that nobody's going hungry and that we think we have a good hold on the community. So thank you all. Um, yeah, it's uh, awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Greet and, and United Way for your role in help facilitating that collaboration. Uh, it's been nice to see all the different um, partnerships that have been forged during this difficult time. Um, so that, that brings us to the end of our program here today with the job with John on September 18th. We thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you uh, next week. Mm -hmm.